Hi, this is George Witte. Welcome to my house concert here. Uh, I'm calling it George Witte's 15 Minutes of Fame. <laughs> Bonus points if you know what that's from. Uh, what I'm going to do here today, I'm going to play about three tunes. Um, I'm going to play a standard, I'm going to play a blues, and on the blues we're going to discuss some of the concepts that we, we go over really early in my Artist Works Jazz Piano series. Uh, and then I'm going to play a tune that Eric Marienthal and I wrote for a record that he did with Randy Brecker. Uh, in between, I'm kind of going to discuss a little bit of concepts that I think about, that I've internalized when I play music. Uh, they're sort of universal, I call them physics principles of playing jazz especially, but they really apply to all music. You can find them in music going all the way to Bach, all the way back to Bach. Uh, and first of all, I'm going to play a standard. I'm going to play Stella by Starlight, a very well-worn, uh, beloved standard. And I'm going to try something on it um, where I'm going to harmonize it with constant structure which means I'm going to take an interval, like I'm actually going to play that's going to be my little go-to clustery thing, and see if I can harmonize the tune by, by moving that around verbatim so that the interval stays, stays the same. Then I'll blow on a little bit, and then we'll be back. So without further ado, here's Stella by Starlight.
So there's Stella by Starlight with a little bit of a different twist on the front of it. It's fun to kind of do stuff like that, you know, just try something different, see if, how much of the tune you can harmonize with something like this. It kind of forces me at least out of my box harmonically. And, you know, there's a way to fit that little collection of notes into practically all of those chords and it makes a weird evocative thing. Sometimes I wonder if Herbie Hancock doesn't find things by doing that sort of thing. The next tune we're going to look at here is a little funk arrangement of a, an F blues. Uh, my kids listen to Mrs. Robinson a lot. Uh, they're in high school and one of them just got to college. And I really love the groove on that. You can't beat that. Uh, and I was doing a little artist work seminar with a couple other teachers from artistworks.com and we wanted to play something like this and I came up with this little uh, sort of funky arrangement of an F blues. What I'm going to do on it is start out with the most elemental thing I possibly could to negotiate my way through the blues. And I filmed these, these lessons, uh, I call them the quick start series. Um, to try to get people up on the horse as quickly as we can with as few notes and as little studying as possible because the more I teach, the more I figure out that getting your time together, getting things to swing, getting things to sit in the pocket is really the essence of playing good jazz. It's kind of the essence of playing most groove-based music. So rather than learn the three scales that we eventually learn on the F blues, Let's see how far we can get if we just play an F minor pentatonic. F, A flat, B flat, C, and E flat. It's just five notes, and you can play the whole tune with just those five notes, and it's actually pretty cool. Uh, I sometimes slide a little B in there, which turns that collection of notes into an F blues scale. But we're kind of going to play the key of the tune rather than navigate each change with its own scale. And just check it out and see how, how far we can get. I'm going to do that for a couple minutes. Then I'm going to introduce three bebop scales, eight note scales that we use in Artist Works Jazz Piano course. Um, and then we're going to throw in a little approach pattern and then I'm just going to go for it. So here we go. Thank you. 
I nailed the ending, but fair enough. So there's some ideas on an F blues. You know, to me, it's amazing how much music can be made. Just with that one scale, and that kind of lets us start to get a feel for what it's like, you know, to play in the pocket, to get our time together, because, you know, one of the, the biggest secrets to Miles Davis, one of the biggest secrets to everybody, Dexter Gordon, Herbie Hancock, Wes Montgomery, whoever it is, is where they put things in time. It lets them play something so simple, but it's the most elegant thing you've ever heard because of where they're putting it in reference to the groove. So that's why I started that little series of lessons is, let's just get our, our F minor pentatonic together, get it fingered, and see how much music we can make by sitting back against the groove, playing behind the beat, kind of swinging the notes, and the way we inflect them. I like to... I like to push the notes between the beats. I can't believe I played a clam in playing that one little scale, but... Okay, so here we go. Next thing I'm gonna do here, the last thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna play a song called Double Dealin', which is a nice funk piece that Eric, Marienth Mar Eric Marienthal and I co-wrote for a record that he did with Randy Brecker called Double Dealin'. Uh, it's a sort of a very blues-based piece. Um, ordinarily, I would play something like this on a Rhodes, a Fender Rhodes electric piano, uh, but I'm sitting here, so I'm gonna play it on this. Um, when we get to the soloing changes, it's A flat seven, and then E seven, then D, D flat, and a nine. There's not that much common turf between the A flat seven, which is a very flat key, and you know E seven, which is a very sharp key. Uh, so when I play tunes like this, and I, I like the solo changes, and I better like them because Eric and I wrote them, I like to kind of outline what the changes are in the melody line as I'm soloing. You almost don't even need to hear this to know what chord that is. Then when we get here, you know, kind of outline that so that we get the shape of the chords and uh, we get the cadences without even hearing um, the harmony. So I'm gonna play the tune, I'm just gonna comp a little bit uh, until we get to the solo sections. And um, when I'm comping, I'm gonna kinda try to use some of what we talk about in our first level of the Artist Works lessons, which is gospel triad harmony. So you're probably gonna hear a fair amount of that in there. Uh, you can kinda make melodies. That's what is hip. Chester Thompson uses this voicing. The great Rick, Ricky Peterson uses this voicing a lot. So I'm going to comp a little bit with that and some other things while we play the heads. And when we get to the solos, the first one is those changes, and then the second one is just winding out on B flat seven. So I'm going to take that. When we see that for 24 bars, it's kind of up to us to do something interesting with it. So I'll play some substitutions and some some unusual harmony in there to get create some tension and release. So this is Double Dealing uh, by Randy Brecker and Eric Marienthal. Um, and I'll see you on the other side.
There's Double Dealing by myself and Eric Marienthal. Fun tune to play on, you know, good energized feel, interesting changes. You gotta think ahead a little bit. One thing that's really helpful when we get in there is the approach patterns. There's four different ones of them, and it's really easy to stick the landing when you're making a transition from one key to another or one chord to another by just playing an approach pattern into it. Is a really nice way to kind of pivot yourself between different pieces of harmony. So there's three tunes. Hope you enjoyed it. Check me out at artistworks.com, the jazz piano lesson series. Uh, there's more than 200 videos in there, five different levels of stuff from very beginning, just getting your feet wet to pretty sophisticated stuff. Uh, you can also film yourself playing any of the exercises, any of the things we talk about, send it to me, and I will reply with a video of my own. I'm kind of verbose, I go on and on, but you get a lot of good information that way and it sort of combines the best of online learning and in-person learning. So I hope to see you at ArtistWorks uh, for your first video exchange. And that's my 15 minutes of fame. Mm -hmm.